Flex Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Now, it's the PJ Flex Show with Pierre Nugent, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. Hi, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the PJ Flex Show alongside Cape fans Justin Gard, the Gopher Hall of Famer Ron Johnson, and of course, joined as always by the Gopher head football coach, PJ Fleck, I am Pierre and Ujim. The Minnesota Gophers are off to a perfect 2-0 start on the young season. The latest victory coming against Eastern Michigan, a hard-fought victory last Saturday night, PJ. From week one to week two, what do you take away from Saturday's performance against the Eagles that had you feeling pretty good about this? Uh, I thought it was a dominating defensive performance. I think we were a little scatterbrained in the first half. We had to settle down, and then by the second half, I mean, they had 14 plays, uh, didn't have a first down in the second half. Uh, offensively, I mean, we were going to run the ball. It's a completely different game plan, completely different looking team from week one. And as a head coach, even when you're going through those games, you know what it takes, but you're still building mentalities of your team throughout the season. Uh, and that was one. We had 56 rushes. We were going to run the ball. They knew we were going to run the ball. We were going to run the ball. And everybody in the stadium knew we were going to run the ball. Uh, whether people liked it or not, we were going to instill that into this this football team. New running backs, new O-line with some pieces. Um, you had to create that mentality. And when you get a Detroit, uh, true freshman out of Detroit, Michigan to come here, one, it shows what happens when, when more Detroit kids commit to Minnesota. You see what happens. Amen. Uh, but Darius Ty, uh, Taylor, I mean, he had a, a ridiculous game. But as a true freshman alone, like to, to be able to, in the first half, 46 yards, second half, just kind of start to kill it, what did you see in his progression? Well, he's been getting better every day in practice. And we recruited him to play as a freshman. I mean, this is a young man who was highly recruited by a lot of people on paper. People are like, well, how'd you get that guy? Uh, because he wanted to be able to contribute as a freshman. I mean, he's only played running back in high school one year. He was a wide receiver before that, but he's big. Uh, you know, he's 5'11", he's 218 pounds. He's incredibly competitive. You can coach him hard. He wants to get better. Uh, and that was his first true performance. He had one carry in game one. So this is about establishing yourself as one of our premier running backs. And whether that's a true freshman, whether that's a fifth-year senior, it doesn't matter. We're going to play the guys who continue to earn to play. And he earned the right to play. Sean Tyler ran the ball well, put it on the ground three yeah. times, then didn't get much clock. I know you're not just going to put him in the genie bottle from Aladdin the rest of the season. You're going to give him <laughs> another opportunity. But take us through what practice is like for him when he has a night like that where he ran the ball well, but as we know we're in here, the ball is the program. Yeah, you go back, you roll the boat, man. He had a bunch of stuff like sleeves on, some, like, with some slippery sleeves on today. He had some things covering his hands that were slippery. Uh, we did some things to really kind of emphasize that the ball is the program. You can say it all you want. Right. Now you got to go do it and fix it. He got the point, um, but he got the point that night. He understands how important that is, and he wasn't mad. He was just disappointed that he did that, right? And, I mean, the ball was on the ground three times. They got one of them, and we just we couldn't afford that at that point. And, and that's where Darius started getting more of the carries. But we'll go right back to Sean. I mean, he's played a ton of football, got a lot of confidence in him. We talked about it after the game. Uh, he's all good. He responded really well today in today's practice. You mentioned it was a little bit of a flipping of the game script from week one to week two. Saw a lot more passing in, in week one against Nebraska. Saw a lot saw a lot more runs against Eastern Michigan. Ethan Kelly McManus throws it only 15 times in the game. Was that did you you kind of alluded to it? Was that the game plan going into? Did you know it was probably going to be a little less of the pass game? And what did you see from Ethan in week two? Yeah, we were going to pass it if we ha absolutely had to pass it in game two. Uh, and I felt like we never got the opportunity where we really truly had to throw it. Again, I wanted to establish a mentality. Win, lose, or draw. Right. We're going to establish a mentality. This is a team full of inexperienced plus experienced players. you got to do what it's going to take to win that football game. And the only way we were going to lose that football game is we put the ball on the ground, right, and, and we threw interceptions. Well, we put the ball on the ground, so then we just wanted to run it more because we weren't going to allow ourselves to throw picks. Uh, or tip balls or anything like that. So um, every game's its own entity, and I thought we did what we had to do to win that particular football game. Now it's kind of like baking a cake. Now we got to be able to put all that together because as we talk about the the hard, second hardest schedule in America or second most opportunistic schedule in America, well. It's here, <laughs> and it's knocking at the door as we go into Chapel Hill this week. And speaking of opportunities on third down, you guys are 61.5%, 8 for 13 on third down, which is key. And then vice versa, your defense held them 3 for 10 on third down. So how important or what emphasis was put on third down this week for your offense? It's always put on third down. You know, playing situational football, winning situational football is critical for us. Um, but 
our guys are executing. What we're not doing a good enough job is is winning first and second down uh, efficiently. But again, it, it, it's a different team. You're still learning your team as you go forward. Uh, we still have our best wide receiver out. We still have our best linebacker out, and are, we're, we're we're doing what it's necessary to win football games. Um, and it, it's you know again, we, I don't want them as as close as we've had them, or maybe just as abnormal as we've had them, but. We have a philosophy. We know what we got to do to win football games, and our players just have to go out there and execute that game plan. The standard the defense has set the last few years is pretty much absurd, especially for longtime Gopher right. fans, where there can be two field goals against Eastern Michigan, and even the head coach is going, we need to calm down a little bit. Things are getting a little crazy, but that's a, I guess, respect and a nod to Joe Rossi and what all that the defensive coaching staff has done. So taking the first half out of it, you mentioned the second half numbers. What were the adjustments? What did you clean up? What did calm down for the defense? I think we were just we were trying to do somebody else's job. Uh, we were just a little jumpy. Uh, we, we would hesitate because we were thinking of so many other things going on instead of just responding and reacting to what's in front of you. One of the strengths we have as a football team is we're really complimentary. You know, you go back only in 11 years. I mean, our defense has time on the sideline to make adjustments. There's so many things throughout a drive that you see that you maybe didn't prepare for that you have to correct and you have to correct it now. Our offense allows with the time of possession for Joe Rossi to do what he does really well and it's in-game adjustments as well. The offense, it allows us to impose our will, to control the clock, gain points, and then special teams is the field position connector. Uh, so we, when you play complimentary football, it's not like just hurry up and score and just get the, or hurry up and just let them score and get the ball back. We don't play that. We, we, we are truly a complimentary football team, which allows us to have the best defense we can, an efficient offense, and then efficient special teams. Now, when we're not playing complimentary, that's when things get a little dicey. I want to stay on defense. I want to talk about a young man who has made his presence felt so far through the first two games. Trayvon Jones led the team in tackles in week one, a crucial interception in week one against Nebraska. Last week, he's got five tackles. He has a sack. He's a transfer this year, and, and he's really – Made an impact for you guys through the first two weeks, hasn't he, PJ? Oh, he really has. He's a spectacular human being. Um, you know, he played at Elon, uh, did a great job there. But he has been – there was a time when we uh, – that we were in training camp, and he came off the edge on a corner cat. And, I mean, he, he just – I mean, just submarine tackled a running back. And I'm sitting there going, well, I haven't seen that happen in years. That just natural. He's got – he's a great personality. When you're bringing in transfers, you always wonder how the locker room is going to take people in. You, you just – you're bringing people from the outside, just like freshmen. Sure. And you know they're all going to connect eventually. But some of the older guys, they're already mature, and you're adding to a different family. Uh, and immediately our guys swarmed them, and, and they took them right in. And you watch five days into it, he's around Wally, he's around Newbin, and you're like, this guy must have a lot of substance because those guys wouldn't have taken him in that quickly uh, if he didn't, uh, and he wasn't a mature player and a person. We're really, really blessed to have him. He's playing at a high level right now, and he's a great compliment to Justin Wally on the other side. Yeah, headed to North Carolina, Co Co uh, Cody Lindenberger. Everybody keeps talking about hey, when is he going to be back? Is he going to be back? Is this the weekend people will see him against North Carolina? Well, we practiced today. <laughs> that's a good start. That's a, that's a good start. We'll, we'll give you the two-hour report before kickoff. <laughs> Fantastic. We have to that the ACC does it. Yep. I think all oh, interesting. Yeah. So we're not going to know about North Carolina stuff before. Well, it's not a conference rule for them. It's a conference rule for us, and, and uh, mm. I, I know our commissioner wants to do it for all the right reasons. and. Um, you know, it just it, it takes the pressure off the kids. You know, uh, it takes the pressure off the, what everybody's worried about right now. And and um, I think it, it works within conference really well. It's starting to, when you get out of conference, it gets a little bit a little, a little hairy at times. But uh, we'll have our, our two hour report ready to go. Ifable was the word PJ used earlier this week. Yeah, Probable, one of the made, made up words. Ifable, Ifable. If you're wondering about some injury status, <laughs> Ifable. Yeah, I like that one. The new That's designation. Along the lines of ifability. <laughs> <laughs> You're learning things every week here on the PJ Flex Show. There's no doubt about it. And we're, when we come back, we're going to sit down with one young man who has made his presence felt as well through the first two weeks. Another newcomer, wide receiver Corey Crooms, joins us on set. Stay with us. More to come here on the PJ Flex Show. Let's row the boat. You're watching the PJ Flex Show. Welcome back into the PJ Flex Show, everybody. Joined now by a very special guest, wide receiver Corey Crooms here on set with us. And Corey, um, through the first two weeks, you've gotten a chance to see your team perform at a high level. You're 2-0 and through two weeks. What has stood out to you about this team's level of play through the first two weeks? Uh, 
really just how everybody just connects, like the team, like nobody's nobody's down on each other. Uh, everybody's always picking somebody up. The defense picking the offense up, offense picking the defense up. So everybody's just real. It's just the connected, like everybody connected together. And after coming off of a big college career, you know, and then entering the transfer portal, a lot of schools reaching out to you. What was the decision or what kind of led you to Minnesota? Uh, well, it just felt like home all over again, like just being back with Coach Harbo, getting around Coach Fleck, uh, Coach Simon. You know, they just made it feel like home. They just welcomed me in. And then getting around the players, too, that was the big, the most important part because that's who I'm around a majority of the time. So everybody just brought in love, and it just made, me, it just made it feel like home all over again. Talk to me about this wide receiver room. How competitive does it get between you guys? How do you guys complement each other both on and off the field? Seems like a pretty tight-knit group. Yeah, yeah, it, get, it gets competitive all the time, like uh, – off, off the field, like in, in the games and everything, like we, we just always trying to one up each other, and we almost most importantly, we always like try to try to better, better each other. Like I'm taking pieces from Jack's game, he's taking pieces from mine, I'm taking pieces from Crab's game, so we just all try to just, just really just uh, feed off each other and just make each other better. PJ, I see you laughing a little bit. So when I say this room is competitive with each other, like what stands out to you about? Not, not only Corey, but the way they compete with each other on the field. They're very competitive. We talk about competing with each other, but we have a thing after Thursday's walkthrough. We've been doing this wide receiver thing for years and years and years. And they go over there, and it's just hot potato. It's just hot potato with the football. And if you don't catch it, you're out. You would think it was like for a gold medal Olympic event, right, <laughs> at, 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 in the Beijing Olympics. Like You would think that's what they were actually competing for. Right over there, uh, it's unbelievable. And... Um, that what, what the competition does, it brings out the best in everybody, and especially when they compete with each other. Corey's been just such a, a great addition to, to our room, and he's got an infectious smile, infectious personality. He's a very smooth player. I mean, he eats up a lot of ground. Uh, a lot of people don't give him enough credit how he weaves in and out of traffic on naked boots, deep overs. That, that's an art. I mean, some people freak out and they stop, and he's a very smooth, smooth player, and we're lucky to have him, and he's, his, best, his best football is down the road. So who won the hot potato? Real quick. Uh, well, I haven't won it yet. But, uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so he cares about yeah. Yeah. I didn't win it yet. That's all so in his voice. You know it wasn't yeah. him. Yeah, Coming to a school where the, uh, the head coach play receiver. I know you guys watch a lot of film, but how much P.J. Fleck film have you watched? Uh, I, honestly, I haven't, I haven't watched many. I haven't watched Have many. you played in basketball yet, though? Are you a hooper? No, I don't hoop. Um, what? Yeah, As a receiver, you don't hoop? Mm, no, I don't, I don't hoop. Oh, my goodness. Knees. You're a rare breed, for real. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well looking at looking at the balance of an offense and defense though, when you when you see that, how hard is it for a defense to really defend when you see an offense that can throw and pass equally? Well that, that's what we're working towards and again we're still a work in progress, you know. Uh, but when you put Crab on the field mm -hmm. and then you put him on the field, you got Daniel Jackson on the field, Brevin Span Ford, plus a running game. That, and and a quarterback that can distribute with an offensive line, that's what we're working towards. We we haven't had that yet in seven years and we're getting towards that and like i said when i meant it like baking a cake that's what i mean you know that, that we're still early in the season of, of of getting all these guys together but any one of those guys can beat you at any moment and that's where we've gotten to and i, I can't wait to keep playing games because they're only going to keep getting better and they complement complement each other really well and they truly don't care who gets the credit who's getting the catch that time because they know they're going to get their touches eventually corey having heard that in your opinion, where's the ceiling for this offense then? Just like PJ was saying, I mean, you got weapons all over the field, and, and when you guys are healthy and on the field at the same time, what's, you know, is the sky the limit for this offense, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, we're just scratching the surface. Like, we're just getting our feet wet. Uh, you know, not a, lot, a lot of new additions, a lot of new moving parts. So we just, it's, it's coming together real well. We're just gelling together. Uh, everything's coming together. So once we get crab, like you said, once we get crab and those guys are back in there, everything's going to just grow real fine. Nathan Kelly Manis, I mean, he's an NFL caliber style looking quarterback and you had to come here and learn him right away fast. How well did you gel in the offseason? Because now it seems like you guys are clicking. Yeah, yeah, the offseason helped a ton. Uh, just getting in here, getting around that guy and uh, Cole Kramer as well. Like those guys just really just helped me like just settle down and just like understand like, OK, like we're in a big team, like things move a little different, like just and just sitting down, just going over like how we, how we operate, operate here. So it's just been real well. It's just been real good. What are you looking forward to the most about taking on North Carolina this weekend? Uh, that's, a, that's a good team over there, but I'm just ready to just go in with my guys and just go compete, you know, like we've been doing, and just go have fun and just play football. Well, we certainly have had a lot of fun watching you through these first two games. Best of luck and continued health and success the rest of the way. Corey Crooms, everybody, we thank you for taking the time here, here on set on the P.J. Flex Show. And like he was just mentioning, 
We've got a game to play this weekend. On the other side of the break, we'll talk about North Carolina and get things ready to roll as the Gophers look to remain undefeated. We'll talk Gophers and Tar Heels straight ahead on the PJ Flex Show. Welcome back to the PJ Flex Show. Let's row the boat. Welcome back, everybody, to the PJ Flex Show. Time to turn our attention to what's coming up in week three. The Gophers hit the road to take on number 20 North Carolina in an out-of-conference matchup. PJ, uh, they, too, are also 2-0. They're coming off a double overtime victory over Appalachian State. Thrilling game, really. Uh, what stands out to you when you look at North Carolina on tape? What are some of the things they do well? Well, first of all, they're a top 20 team, and they're exactly where they should be ranked. I mean, the, the, the defense they have, the offense they have, I mean, it's up there with the Penn States. It's up there with the Ohio States and the Michigans. I mean, it's they're exactly where they should be. This isn't a preseason ranking, and it is kind of fit. They are a top 15 team in the country by the way they play defensively. they got eight guys up front that rotate defensively. Offensively, they've got a quarterback who's in the Heisman hunt. Um, they've got four running backs that are all six foot, 215 pounds minimum, uh, and they rotate them like water, just keep going. And uh, good wideouts, big tight ends. Uh, they got an all American linebacker, all conference linebacker. I mean, partridge in a pear tree. I mean, <laughs> I mean other than that, I mean, <laughs> so we've got our work cut out for us. They're very good. We're going to have to play our best football. We got a really good game plan, we feel, but uh, these guys are really good. They're really well coached. Mac Brown's won close to 300 football games. He's won over 100 at North Carolina, over 100 at, you know, Texas. Um, he'll have them ready to go, and uh, we got to head out to Chapel Hill. So Yeah, running the ball on offense, I've always heard offensive line coaches say it's about, like, just the wheel. you got to want to beat the guy up in front of you. I'm guessing on the defense they say the same thing. So when your defense looks at a guy like Omarion Hampton, Man. you know, run, has run the ball a lot, yeah. what mindset does that front seven need to go into the game? Yeah. And I guess everybody, all 11. you got to have an elite mindset. I mean, you got to go in. With that You have to stop the run. If you don't stop the run, it'll be a long afternoon. And it's simple, right, and when it comes down to that. Now, how you stop the run versus them with all their weapons and what they have plus your quarterback, it's challenging. As you can see here, this young man ran for over 200 yards last game. And, I mean, it was quick, and it happens fast. I mean, they see the hole, they hit the hole, they're big, strong, physical, they break arm tackles, uh, good stiff arms, as you can see on the TV right now. I mean, this is what they do. I mean, it seems like every run they had was just like that. So uh, we got to play really sound. We got to play R11, have to be on point, playing with each other, all in sync, all in sound, and play incredibly tough. When you play a unique non-conference opponent, and these two teams have never played, like I think back to going to Boulder a few years ago, and it's all about altitude, and it's all about these things. Like, What are the unique challenges of going to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, that you had to learn about or think about as you prepare? Well, I think it's just this is our first road trip, right, getting all that prepared, uh, talking about the hydration piece of that. Uh, other than that, I mean, there's, it's really just going on the road. You know, it's our first trip on the road with this football team. So making sure that all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted, and and get them ready to play. Have you noticed a difference from maybe when you first got here about Gopher fans making these types of trips? Because it seems like all summer, everybody I've talked to, it's like, we'll see you in Chapel Hill That's or we'll see you in Boulder. Fantastic. I mean, that has to be pretty cool for you to see where that has come. It's so cool. And there's so many fans that travel. Uh, it, it, the kids love that. It, it, it's great to be able to see that even when we're doing something well, it's still they're still cheering. There's a lot of cheering going on. And each year that's gotten louder and louder and louder on the road. And that's just a credit to our fans and our supporters. And I uh, just can't thank you enough. Yeah, and Justin brought that up. You know, when you talk about the road trip, I was blessed enough with the opportunity to travel with you guys to Indiana. So I saw a lot of the inside stuff. So how do you guys get the newer guys, like you said, the culture to like, hey, this is how we travel. This is what we do on the plane. When we get off the plane, this is what we do to make sure guys like Corey Crooms and Elijah Spencer kind of know where to go, where to be. Because I remember traveling. That's scary when you look at a calendar sometimes or a thing, and you're like, whoa, what time do I have to be where? You know, like how do you guys make sure to drill that in? Well, the only difference is there's an airplane involved because what we do is because <laughs> we travel, you know, we stay at the Westin in Edina. Yep. We stay right here for all of our, uh, our home trips, and uh, it's the exact same itinerary. The only difference is TSA and an airplane, you know, instead of the bus, and, and that's it. So. Okay. Uh, our players understand there's things we have that are NFL style. Mm -hmm. That's a time, meaning you go from like, it's from eight to nine. Okay, yep. that means you can show up at 8.59 and you're still good. Call it NFL time, yep. right? But if it's team style, it's starting at eight o'clock, like on the dot. That means everybody has to be there before that. So they have that all mapped out. It's just like home games, but the only difference is the travel on the plane. Coach Nickel, our dietitians, uh, Rachel Stark, our nutritionist, 
uh, all of our trainers go through a whole deal of our sleep doctors, Dr. Howell, who's here on campus, of when to sleep. We tell them when they should take a nap, how long the nap should be, when to take that nap on the airplane, uh, and where they're going to get the most benefit from that. Uh, so I think that's every stone is turned over, that's for sure. Uh, we don't leave any stone unturned, that's for sure, uh, when we travel on the road. we got about a minute left, but PJ, before we go, I want to get your thoughts. I heard you on the radio talking about Mac Brown and, and how you've had, built a relationship with him. What's your relationship like with Mac Brown? Like you said, a guy who has done a lot in college football. I don't think Mac's ever met somebody he didn't like or walked away that didn't like him after the conversation. It's unbelievable. Even watch his press conferences. I love watching his press conferences because the media is hot and heavy after him right away. And it, it, I need to get this trait because after 15 <laughs> minutes, he's told so many stories, they're just eating right out of the palm of his hand. They, whatever, they, whatever was going on, they completely forgot. And now the media is just enamored with the stories that he just told. My wife, Heather, met him for the first time. And she walked away and said, I am a huge Mac Brown fan. How could somebody not play for him? I'm like, you just got recruited. <laughs> but that is Mac. He, he is one of the best people in the business, one of the best coaches. He's a friend of mine. He's helped me through a lot of things and a lot of things I've gone through with my career. Uh, and he's, he's there for a lot of people. I think yeah. when I say a lot of people consider him a friend, uh, that's a talent that he has, that's for sure. Well, it certainly will be a fun and entertaining matchup when the Gophers take on the Tar Heels this weekend. And don't forget, everybody, you can join us this Saturday on the Gopher pregame show as we get you ready for kickoff between the Gophers and the Tar Heels. The big man, Justin Gard, he's going to be live in the Chapel big Hill. Man. The big man. The okay. Big, hey, the big man, Justin Gard, right. he's going to be in there. And we can't wait to see him out in Chapel Hill, my friend. All right, we'll see everybody this Saturday.